In this lesson, we will determine the key characteristics of a piecewise defined function by analyzing the graph of the function. Number one, using interval notation, we're asked to find the domain of the given piecewise defined function. The domain is a set of all possible inputs or x values, and therefore to find the domain, we analyze the graph from left to right. Notice the leftmost point on the graph is this point here where x equals negative three, and because the point is closed at x equals negative three, negative three is in the domain of the function. Notice the rightmost point on the function is this point here where x equals five. Again, the point is closed, and therefore x equals five is in the domain. From here, notice from x equals negative three to x equals positive five, there are no holes or breaks in the graph, and therefore the domain is the closed interval from negative three to positive five, which we indicate using interval notation as open square bracket, negative three comma positive five closed square bracket. Remember, if the endpoints were not included, we would use parentheses rather than square brackets. Next, we're asked to determine the range using interval notation, where the range is a set of all possible outputs or y values. To find the range, we analyze the graph vertically. Notice how the lowest point on the graph is this point here, where y is equal to negative four, and the point on the graph here is closed, and therefore y equals negative four is in the range. The highest points on the graph are up here where y equals positive two. And again, there are no holes or breaks in the graph from y equals negative four to y equals positive two, and therefore the range is a closed interval from negative four to positive two, which we indicate as open square bracket negative four comma positive two closed square bracket. Next, we're asked to determine f of four, where four is the input or x value. To determine the function value, we go to the x-axis and locate positive four, and then in this case, go down to the graph and locate the point. Notice how the point where x equals positive four is the point four comma negative three, where four is the x value and negative three is the y value or function value. F of four is equal to the function value or y value of negative three. Next, we're asked to solve f of x equals one. So here we are given the function value or y value, and we're asked to find the inputs or x values. So we first locate one on the y-axis, which would be here, and then locate the points on the graph where y is equal to one. Notice how there are two of them. On the left, we have the point negative 2.5 comma one. On the right, we have the point 0 0.5 comma one. So notice how the y value or function value is positive one when the input or x value is negative 2.5 or 0 0.5. And therefore these solutions are x equals negative 2.5 comma 0 0.5. Number five, we're asked to find the y-intercept or vertical intercept of the graph. This is where the graph touches or crosses the y-axis, which would be this point here or notice how the ordered pair is zero comma two. So the y-intercept is the point given by the ordered pair zero comma two. Number six, we're asked to find the x-intercepts of the graph, which is where the graph touches or crosses the horizontal or x-axis. Notice how this occurs in two places. The graph touches the x-axis at the point negative three comma zero and crosses the x-axis at the point one comma zero. So we have two x-intercepts, which we give as ordered pairs, negative three comma zero and one comma zero. Number seven, we're asked to find these zeros. Remember the zeros are related to the x-intercepts. These zeros are the x-values for which the corresponding function value or y-value is zero. And since one x-intercept is negative three comma zero, we know when x equals negative three, the y value or function value is zero, and therefore one zero is x equals negative three. And we also know from the x-intercept of one zero, when x is one, the corresponding output or function value is zero, and therefore x equals one is also a zero. So we say the zero is x equals negative three comma positive one. Next, we're asked to find the minimum value of the function. To find the minimum value, we locate the lowest point on the graph 
which is down here. Notice how the ordered pair for this low point is 3 comma negative 4. So the minimum function value is the y value of negative 4 and the x value is a location. So for number 8, we say the minimum function value is f of x equals the y value of negative 4, which we can also say occurs at x equals positive 3. Next, we're asked to find the maximum value of the function. So now we locate the highest point on the graph. In this case, there are several high points. All the points along this horizontal segment here have the maximum y value or function value of positive 2. And therefore, we say the maximum value is f of x equals the y value of 2. And then for number 10, we're asked to determine if the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant over the given open intervals. To determine whether the function is increasing, decreasing, or constant, we analyze the graph from left to right. If the graph is going uphill from left to right, then the function is increasing over the interval. If the graph is going downhill from left to right, then the function is decreasing over the interval. And if the graph is horizontal over the interval, then the function is constant over the interval. So first we have the open interval from negative 3 to positive 2, and these are x values. So we analyze the graph from x equals negative 3 to x equals negative 2, which is this piece of the graph. Notice how from left to right the graph is going uphill, and therefore the function is increasing over this open interval. Next we have the open interval from x equals negative 2 to x equals 0, which is this piece of the graph. Notice how the graph is horizontal over this interval, and therefore the function is constant over this interval. Next we have the open interval from x equals 0 to x equals 3, which is this piece of the graph. Again, from x equals 0 to x equals 3, notice how the graph is going downhill from left to right, and therefore the function is decreasing over this interval. And then finally, we have the open interval from x equals 3 to x equals 5, which is this rightmost piece of the graph. Notice how over this interval the graph is going uphill from left to right, and therefore the function is increasing over this interval. I hope you found this helpful.